Hey, beloved, Krista Pettiford here. I have a message for God's daughters, a prophetic word. I heard the Lord saying, tell my daughters not to give up, not to throw in the towel. I feel in my spirit that there are some of you who have been praying for something for a long time and you're ready to throw in the towel. You're ready to give up. And God says, don't give up. Do not quit. Having done all to stand, continue to stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. If you have sown the word in tears, you are going to reap with joy. And so you just have to stand. And it's the devil's job to get you to quit, to get you to look at the temporary things that you see so that you can make eternal permanent decisions based off of what he's showing you. But it's a distraction. It's a smoke screen. It's a deception to get you to make a decision off of something that's going on that's temporary. But God's word is eternal and it can break that thing when it's prayed and spoken and believed on by faith and in faith. So if you release your faith over your situation in accordance with God's will and plan and what you know he's spoken to you, what you what you know he has uh, released to you by a prophetic word, his plans and his promises that you know are God's, but you cannot understand why they are not coming to pass. Hold on and know that sometimes we go through the trying of our faith, which is more precious than gold. And when our faith is being tried and tested, it feels like um, that sometimes it can feel like things are being ripped right under us. Everything that God says look like, like the, looks like it's going opposite. But God says, hold on, do not give up. And then there comes the temptations, which comes from the enemy because God doesn't tempt anyone, but temptation comes from the enemy. So he tries to tempt you away from the word. He tries to lure you the way that he lured Eve into doing something that God never told her to do that looked better than what God had for her in her mind at the time or it looked like God was holding back on her. But I've come to tell you to hold on, to continue to do good, not to throw in the tile, towel, not to um, give up and not to faint. Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season, you have a due season coming. You will ring if you do not lose heart. And the thing about God is that he can do suddenly. The enemy wants you to look at things that are temporal. And let me just go there because the enemy would love for you to look at everything that's temporary around you. According to for us, second Corinthians four, um, in chapter and verse 18, it says, we do not look at the things which are temporary, which are seen, but the things which are unseen for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are unseen are eternal. And so the enemy's job is to try and wear out the saints, to try and get you to believe that something temporary is going to last. And so what we do is we get caught up in asking God, how is it going to happen? How can he move this mountain instead of just trusting that he is the mountain mover and that he can speak to the mountain. And if we speak to the mountain, the issues, the problems in our life and believe in our hearts and do not doubt, then it shall come to pass. And sometimes we get caught up, as I said, looking at the mountain and we're telling God how big our mountain is instead of telling our mountain how big our God, our God is. And the enemy gets you so caught up in the temporary circumstances that you begin to doubt, you begin to fear, you begin to get distracted and try and figure things out yourself and see the unbelief and the doubt leads to deception and leads you off into another place. And that's how it starts. It leads you away from your destiny. God has a destiny for you, daughter of God. And God wants you to know not to faint, not to give up. Do not be moved by what you see temporarily, what you see because it's temporary and he can change it in a moment. 
what looks too hard for man is never too hard for God. What is impossible with man is possible with God. And your situation can change overnight. And I know what it's like because I've been there. I've been in a situation where it looks um awful, where it looks defeated, where it looks done. But as I drop to my knees and I have prayed in those situations, I hear the Lord saying, hold on. And I've seen him turn things around, but I've also seen him give me the strength and the power by his spirit, not by my might, to continue to stand on his word when um, until he, until my due season comes, when the enemy would say, throw in the tower, when the circumstances would say, faint. That means give up completely. Let complete loose of your hold that you have on this matter with your faith. But God wants you to continue to stand in faith and know that you're going to reap in your due season. I don't know how long you've been standing and I don't know how long you will have to stand. All I know is that God told me to speak to you with this prophetic word of encouragement for whoever is thinking of giving up, thinking of quitting, thinking of throwing in the towel on their dream, on their answered prayer, on the prophetic word that they've been given, on a relationship, on a relationship with um, a spouse or a friend, a family member, or even a relationship with the church to give up on being a part of the church. I, I feel like someone may have had some hurt, some church hurt and wanting to give up and I'll just do my thing over here. But God is saying, do not give up. Do not give in. But when you feel like fainting, when you feel like quitting, that's when you need to stand. That's when you need to press in because the enemy's job is to get you away from the people of God. The enemy's job is to get you out of fellowship and community with the people of God so that he can get you by yourself and begin to speak lies to you. But I call you in the name of Jesus by the spirit of God back into the fold of God. I call you back into your local church. I call you back into a posture of prayer and faith and believing God against what you see, against what you see with your natural eyes. And I say that your eyes will look to heaven. Your eyes will look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I thank you, Father, that my sister on the other end of this um, video is going to reap a harvest of blessings because she refused to quit. Sometimes all you have to do is refuse to quit, refuse to speak against your promise, refuse to throw in the towel. And that's why Paul said, because he knew that having done all to stand, just stand. And sometimes we just need to know, God, what is the one thing that you want me to do? Let me get rid of all the distractions and the things that are pulling me away from God, the thing that looks good, but is not God. And let me focus in mm. on the one thing, that, the one or few things that you have called me to do. Let me, I hear the word weary, the word weary, do not grow weary while doing good. And then we heard the word earlier, um, the enemy thinks to wear out the saints, to tire them out, to keep you going in a fight that has already been won because it's already done in Jesus Christ. You just have to await by faith and pull it in. Then he wants to wear you out, which is the same as growing weary. One, he throws at you. The other, you do because you're internalizing what he's doing. And so I pray strength over you. The strength of God, not your own strength, not your own might, but that you will be strengthened in your inner man by being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that strength over you, that you would enter into a season of rest because see our Prophetic words in our promises go through four different 
seasons. I like to call them four seasons. We welcome the word. We say, thank you, God. We get the prophetic word. We get the promise. We read the word. Somebody speaks something into us and we welcome the word. And then we war over the word. And we wrestle with it. The enemy's trying to get us to faint. Our own minds are trying. It's hard for us to believe in our natural minds. And so we have to settle things and believe it by faith with our spirit. So we're warring and we're wrestling to believe because the Bible says labor to enter into the rest of God. And when we finish warring and wrestling over the word, then we go into a season where we are resting in the word, which I like to call waiting. We're waiting on God. Hallelujah. Having done all to stand, we're standing. So I call you out of your war into a resting and waiting state, and then we walk in it. And there's some things I'm walking in today that I warred over in last season. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is not done, but there are things that I warred over that I welcomed when I heard the war word that I had to war over. And your warfare is also, the Bible says we war not against flesh and blood. It's not just you trying to believe it. Um, but it's also the enemy trying to snatch the word from you. He's trying to take, he's trying to get you to, he's trying to choke it out, trying to suffocate it, trying to bring the distractions of the world so that you won't hold on to your word. But the Bible says, blessed are they who have the word of God and keep it. And so beloved, I just come to tell you by the spirit of God, do not faint, do not quit. There will be days where you have to do this thing every day. I have been in a season like that. I know what it's like to have to get up and do it every day. You overcome and then you have to overcome again because your circumstances from all outward appearances haven't changed, but your circumstances are not counting on God suddenly move. Your circumstances are not counting on the break or breaking through suddenly and flooding that thing, but God is going to show up when the devil least expects it. Sometimes even when we least expect it, the word of God says, um, if they, they had have known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had the enemy known that he was going to rise and defeat hell, he would not have put in the minds of man to kill our Lord Jesus, but he didn't realize it was part of God's plan. And so God already knew this that Christ must go to the cross for us. So the devil is not all knowing and all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. And what the enemy means for evil, God is going to turn around for your good. And so I just encourage you today, beloved, to hold on, hold on. If all you can do is wake up and not throw in the towel in this season, I don't care what the devil offers you. I don't care how good the deal is. I don't care how wonderful it looks. The other thing, the shiny thing that he's showing you, if it's not what God promised you and you get any check in your spirit, then know that it's the devil trying to lead you away from the thing that God has for you. See, the devil will try and lead you. He distracts you with what you, by showing you what you don't have instead of uh, so that you don't wait for God to give you what he has for you. I hope that makes sense. He'll show you all that you don't have. You don't have this. You don't have that. All the things. And he distracts you and says, well, if you go this way, they're over there. But then God says, don't be deceived. Stay right here because I have something for you that eyes have not seen nor ears heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of mine. The things that God has in store for those who love him exceedingly abundantly above all that you dare ask or think. That's a matching corresponding scripture that God has for you when you believe. So I pray that this encourages you. God bless you until next time. Hold on, keep standing in faith. I don't know what season you're in, but stand in faith over your household, over the promises and the prophetic word and the purposes and plans of God for your life. Until next time.